In the Department of Things I didn't expect, Disney has confirmed that they are making changes to the disability access system. Changes designed to deter guests from using it as a cheat, as a way of getting around paying for Genie Plus. We'll cover the specifics of those changes and also give you our thoughts on how bad the situation really is, as in it may be worse than they're letting on, and the real reason why they're making these changes. The DAS program is for guests who, due to a developmental disability like autism or something similar, are unable to wait in a conventional queue for an extended period of time. That's per the Disney website and the idea with the DAS system is to allow guests the opportunity to, instead of waiting in the physical queue, spending 45 minutes in Pirates, for example, they wait somewhere else, on a park bench, or at a restaurant, or doing literally anything else besides standing in that queue. It's very much like Lightning Lane. In fact, DAS guests use the same queue that Lightning Lane guests use when entering an attraction. Except for, obviously, once you register for an attraction, you don't get to go right in like you do with Lightning Lane. You still have to wait however long the standby wait is. If Pirates is a 45 minute wait, then once you've registered, you have to wait 45 minutes before you enter the Pirates queue in that Lightning Lane queue. And except also that, naturally, it's free. And it's that free part that has been, observably, the, the reason for the abuse of the DAS system a way of getting around having to pay for Genie Plus. Now, before we get any further, let me make a couple of disclaimers to ensure that it is understood that this report is being made objectively and without judgment against anybody who uses the DAS system or intends to use the DAS system. I am not obviously in any way qualified to determine who should or shouldn't be using the DAS system. That's Disney's job. So none of this report should be considered any kind of judgment on those guests who have used it or who wish to use it. And while misuse of the program has been the subject of discussion ever since the program began, it's never been discussed here because simply there's, there's no way for me as a third party viewer to be able to say it is or is not a thing. Today though, Disney is saying it's a problem. Disney is establishing new criteria and new rules in an effort to curb the abuse of the DAS program. Per the OC Register, who I am certain is getting their information directly from Disney, guests applying for and using the DAS program have tripled in the past five years. Certainly, that's a huge increase, especially when you consider it's not very likely that there has been a, a similar increase in the number of disabled guests in the, in the Disney Parks universe. So that alone is an interesting number. Again, also, per the OC Register, DAS use has exploded in recent years in part because more people have become aware of the service. Social media hacks have exploited DAS as a free way to avoid paying for the Genie Plus line cutting service and have led to abuses. And so with this report from the OC Register and Disney's changes to the DAS system, they are making it public. They are bringing this out into the open. They are making it public that from their operational perspective, that the DAS system is it's overrun. And that is resulting in big problems in the parks vis-a-vis -vis wait times, both standby and lightning lane. Both queues are being affected. So with that, let's talk real quick about the specific changes that Disney is making to the DAS program. Disney has said overtly that the goal is to limit the service as much as possible to those guests who are unable to legitimately wait in a standby queue, specifically naming those guests with autism. Disabled guests, for example, will be encouraged to use the proper standby queue, but do it in a wheelchair. Guests will also be encouraged to make use of systems like Rider Switch. And this one is good. Those guests who are not eligible or who do not qualify for the DAS system will be encouraged to simply buy Genie Plus. <laughs> and that's actually very noteworthy. We'll talk about that again in a minute. It is also my understanding that Disney is going to be hiring additional cast whose sole role is going to be to help assist and manage those uh, DAS holders. And those casts, they're not gonna be in guest relations in City Hall anymore. They're taking that outfit and they're putting that out in the Esplanade now. They're gonna use some of those uh, you know, no longer used ticket booths. And those of you who are looking to sign up for the DAS system, that's something that you should make specific note of. Contact Disney first before you visit. And you could actually set up a, a, a virtual video chat 
where you can kind of do that interview to, to find out what you're eligible for. But if you do wait till you come to the park, if you skip that part, don't go into the park first. Don't go to City Hall. Don't go to Guest Relations. They're going to send you right back out into the Esplanade. That's where the interview first happens. That's where that meeting first happens with CAST to get into the DAS system. And while no details have been given in terms of what that interview is going to be like, be that you know, what, what inclusions or exclusions they might be adding or subtracting to determine your eligibility. One thing, one rule, that, a specific rule that is changing is that they're going to reduce the maximum number of guests that can, be, that can travel with that DAS holder. They're going to reduce that party to four, and that includes the DAS holder. So it's a DAS holder plus three more guests. That's down from, I guess, the generally accepted six that it was prior to this, although it is my understanding in most cases, even guest parties that were greater than six, the cast member would typically just let them in because you don't want to, you don't want to break up the party. That would be just, that's a bad show. Uh, so even though there was a quote unquote limit of six, pretty much the party was as big as you wanted it to be. They're going to reduce that to four uh, with exceptions being made for, for families. Naturally, families that are more than four and they're all part of the same unit. I'm sure that all of that will be covered in the interview to determine how big your actual travel party is. Also note that everyone who was or is a DAS user will have to reapply. Once this takes effect, everyone will have to reapply for the DAS system, which by the way, that's going to happen at Disneyland on June 18th. This affects or takes effect on June 18th here at Disneyland and on May 20th at Walt Disney World. And all of this, what we said so far is in an effort to crack down on people cheating by using the DAS system. And this you will find stated explicitly by Disney on their website, per Disney. If it is determined that any of the statements the guests made in the process of obtaining DAS are not true, the guests will be permanently banned from entering Walt Disney World and Disneyland, and any previously purchased annual passes, Magic Key passes, tickets, and other park products and services will be forfeited and not refunded. That's language that we haven't seen before, as far as I know. And it's a shot across the bow, really, for, for those people who are playing fast and loose with the DAS program. And that's pretty much it. Those are the basics for the changes being made to the program. Let's talk next about why they're doing this, what the real reasons are they're doing this, and how bad the situation really is. First. Our sources are suggesting that the situation is considerably worse than the three times as many number that was quoted in the OC Register article. They reported that it, there are three times as many DAS users today as there were five years ago. We're being told that it's closer to double that, maybe 6x, six times as many DAS users as there were five years ago. And actually, I might even take issue with the, the the five-year parameter. I don't think it's been five years. I think you can limit this discussion to just the past couple of years, to the inception of Genie Plus. It's paid fast pass that has incentivized people to find a loophole, to find a way around from paying for Genie. And this problem is compounded by the fact that, as we mentioned before, DAS holders use the same queue as Lightning Lane gets, as Genie Plus users. We've all been witness to the gradual decline in the state of standby wait times around the parks. As, as Disney sells more Genie Plus and has more people sign up for DAS, it's increasing the, the, the queues in Lightning Lane and therefore wreaking havoc on standby wait times. And guests are getting more vocal in their dissatisfaction with the state of things. The worse it gets, the more awareness this situation becomes in the public eye. And therefore, Disney feels compelled to do something about it. They're trying to send a message about cracking down on misuse in order to hopefully inhibit people from even trying in the first place. But in reality, the, the changes so far that have been proposed are, are kind of a half measure, even though I, I couldn't expect them to, to go much further in terms of tightening the actual program itself without creating controversy, because controversy will follow this discussion no matter what they do. But a half measure they are because in reality, they're not really solving the actual cause of the misuse of the DAS system. In other words, why are there 
now, three times more DAS users than there were just a few years ago. Same program five years ago. Nothing really has changed as far as the actual program goes. Nothing has changed in that period. What has changed is paid fast paths. One could even argue that Disney could perceive this, the DAS abuse more as a problem of, of missed revenue as opposed to simply being an inconvenience to the general guest. Certainly standby wait times increase as more guests flow into uh, the Lightning Lane queues and that affects the guest experience. But those who are misusing the DAS program are also not buying Genie Plus. And that's not even all because I feel like, as we mentioned before, that the, the, the issue, the longer wait times are not affecting just standby. They're affecting both Lightning Lane and standby guests. In other words, they're hearing from the people who are paying. They're hearing from people who have bought Genie Plus and who are saying, my God, I paid $30 for this Genie Plus system and I still have to wait you know, in, for 20 minutes in this queue outside of Mission Breakout. Look at the size of this queue. Why did I buy this? And so if they're going to be hearing from the people complaining about spending money, now they're really, they're, the alarm bells are going off for Disney and they really need to do something about it because they don't want to stop selling Genie Plus. But that's really the issue, isn't it? If Disney really were interested in solving the issue with DasPass, they would do this. They would make the changes to the DAS program and then give those guests who don't want to pay for Genie Plus some kind of break. They need to bring back some kind of free fast pass option. Maybe not like it was with MaxPass. Quick reminder though on MaxPass, it wasn't, MaxPass wasn't paid fast pass. It was paid digital fast pass. It gave you the ability to book a fast pass using the app rather than having to walk all the way to the attraction and get one of those paper fast passes from a fast pass kiosk. So you didn't have to get MaxPass in order to get a fast pass. You could get one for free. You just had to work a little harder for it. MaxPass removed all that difficulty. It was pretty good. Looking back on it, it, it compared nicely to what we have today. It was a nice compromise. For the, You had both a free option and a paid option. Everybody wins. Now, I don't think that there is any chance whatsoever that Disney would go back to that literal program. For obvious reasons, there's no, no company would regress, would take a step back from a digital solution and go back to an analog one, the, the actual paper fast pass kiosks. No chance that that ever happens again. But if Disney could find some way to perhaps, you know, even just one fast pass for, you know, the everyday guest, the tick, you know, ticket holder or, or an annual pass holder, Knott's Berry Farm. I get one fast lane every day that I go to Knott's Berry Farm with my pass. That's I mean, it's, it's something, not necessarily to solve the issue with DAS abuse or to solve the issue with paid fast pass Genie Plus ruining standby for everybody, but if only to sort of make every guest at least in some way feel valued and wanted in the park, to give them a little bit, just to give them just something, an opportunity to make them feel wanted and not just because they were willing to pay an extra $30 for Genie Plus. June 18th is when we'll begin to find out how effective this new system is and if there will be any impact on standby wait times. I can tell you this, we'll find out. We'll be there in the park watching, observing, and reporting. And we can, I'll be able to tell you whether or not there has been a change uh, in, in the standby wait times because that's what we love to do. That's what we're best at. And we'll be there for you to help you make the most out of your Disneyland day. Thank you guys for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I know that there's going to be lots of comments. This will be one of the most comment filled videos that we've done in recent memory. Um, and I, I'd like to hear from you guys. I, there has to be some kind of compromise here, I believe. And with that, thanks everybody for watching. We love you. Follow us on Instagram at underscore Fresh Baked, on Twitter at Fresh Baked Disney, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at Fresh Baked Disney. Thanks again. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh Baked.